Hello, good morning. Uh, this is the second time I've made this video and I'm currently in a louder class so I'll, I have to uh, apologize for the noise but I think we'll still be okay. Um, what we're doing today is we're going to make a uh, take something like a kick drum or a snare drum and turn it into something. I think this is it. Let me see. Kick fixed. Yeah. Um, so why does it say UN here? The reason it says UN is because this is a example of onomatopoeia for how I feel a kick drum sounds like. So I'm trying to visually represent how this kick drum sounds. I have provided you a blank kick drum, a blank snare drum, a blank uh, hi-hat, and I'm going to show you how to do something kind of like you see in the comic books where um, you know a cat meows and it goes what kind of thing. Um, okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to take a little sip of my... I'll edit that out later. Okay, um, to begin we need the text tool. So I'm going to grab my type tool. And um, I'm using Cooper Black for this because it's like kind of a cool cartoonish, like an old school Garfield looking font. Um, so it's up to you what you want to use. You'll also notice I have a very large font size right here. And that's because this is a high resolution uh, picture of a drum. And all the ones are pretty high res. Uh, so I'm going to let you experiment with the looking around for fonts that help you figure it out. I kind of like this font because uh, it looks like an old 70s font. It reminds me of being a kid. Okay. And this is a nice little preview of how large my font is going to be. So I'm now going to type in, mm. and it's black. So I'm going to double click on that, and we're going to make this. I did white last time, but I'm feeling, we'll do Sea King Blue. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Right? Or, unt, 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 unt. So if you're, um, if you pick the hi-hat, maybe you would use like a TS or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. I do not want it to look like mine though, that's for sure. Maybe you pick something besides UN too. Um, a note about kerning. Kerning is the spacing between letters, so I'm going to hold down the Alt key and use my arrows to go left and right to change the spacing between these. All right. So here we go, let me uh, continue this. Thank you. Um, so we were talking about kerning, and that was with the Alt key. Um, so if we want to change the spacing between letters, we're going to hold down Alt, and move my letters back and forth with the arrow key. So Alt left and Alt right work great for that. OK. When you're done, I'm going to kind of set the text and just click on this Move button. And that will set my text. And now I can click and drag on it, move it around in here. Um, I can use the Type tool to highlight it again and make it bigger if I want, like so. And then, uh, again, I'm going to grab the Move tool to stop editing it. OK, so now that I've got my, uh, my word here, uh, the next thing I want to do is add some effects to this layer, this text layer. You're welcome. So I'm going to come down here to my Layers menu and choose FX. So I'll click on FX. And can I get the noise level down a little bit in here? Shh. Uh, under FX, I'm going to choose Stroke. Because if you notice on a lot of these comics where they're using automatopoeia, there is a stroke around the text of a different color. Um, so in this layer style window that I've just opened, so this says effects, but it looks like uh, technically it's called layer styles. Uh, the stroke one is really cool. So I'm going to turn up the size of the stroke so I can see it a little better. Okay, cool. Um, the color is not really working very well because it's not very contrasty. It's kind of like giving me a headache looking at it. So I'm going to choose a different because orange is the opposite, the complementary color to blue. I'll choose that. And then click OK. 
Awesome. This is this is looking good so far. Um, other options of things that you can do to kind of make this word sound like something is adding a uh, shape here. So there's these shape tools down here underneath this arrow. I'm going to hold on the shape tool here and choose custom shape tool. And what's really cool is under the custom shape tool, you can choose custom shapes up here on the top. And look, there's a little musical symbol. There is a fleur de lis. There's a light bulb. So maybe like um, this might be fun to use if you're using the uh, tss, 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 right? Or don't use any of these. I don't care. Lightning bolt might be cool. So to use one of these, you select the shape you want to draw, and then you just click and drag it. And the fill right now is black. So I'm going to use like a, uh, oh, just a white color. Okay. Awesome. Use my move tool. And I'm going to move this over. I don't know. Here. It's not really the right angle right now, so I'm going to use the free transform, which is control T. And that will let me rotate this around. Awesome. And then I'll apply the transition, transformation. I'm also going to copy this by holding down the Alt key, dragging it to the left. Like so. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another thing I might want to do is liquefy this text. Liquefy is awesome. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to select my text layer, go up to the. Uh, where are we here? Let's see. What am I doing here? Oh, filter. Sorry. The filter menu and choose liquefy. And when you choose liquefy, oh, uh, that's funny. I'm sorry. I'm going to do control Z. That was wrong. That was wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm going to go under filter. And it's this liquefy. This top thing was the last filter I've chosen. So your liquefy is going to be right here. So kind of confusing for me. And this is asking me, do I want to rasterize? I'll say yes, rasterize. And what that means is it's going to make like a picture out of my text here. Uh, you're not seeing the strokes right now because uh, we'll see it when we get back uh, to my layer. But let's talk about liquify. In liquify, you can do a couple different kinds of liquify. First being the forward warp tool. This is an awesome tool because it lets you uh, basically like do what the icon is showing you, which is basically smudging like ink around. So look, if I click and drag, I can like make these kind of cool swirls come off this. So this is like a really fun way to decorate. I mean, look at, you know, very minimal work here. I've kind of made this text look more interesting. Um, again, up to you. How are you going to represent sound? I'm actually shocked by how cool this looks. Um, yeah. Imagine if you're making some kind of punk rock um, beat. Maybe you would like make a mohawk of some kind. If you get to a point where you don't like what you've done, um, you are going to reset it. So down here I have a cancel button. If you hold down Alt, uh, it turns to reset. It'll let you reset. So hold down Alt, choose reset. And I actually noticed this last time. It doesn't actually work, so I'm going to go back. Filter um, and liquefy. And it's going to ask me to rasterize again. That's fine. Okay. Um, another thing about the liquify tool is that the size of the brush matters. So this is kind of a small brush. If I, I'm going to undo, control Z, I can increase the size of the brush by holding uh, the bracket keys, which are the keys next to the P key. P is in Paul. Um, if I do right bracket, it gets bigger. Left bracket, it gets smaller. So look at what happens if I make it big. Mm. You know, now it is a... Oh, look, my phone is buzzing. That's funny. Um, I'm going to undo that. And let's show you a couple other ones. Here is a twirl. And if you click and hold, it will do like a whirlpool effect. That's fun. Um, there is a pucker tool. So for these, I need to make my brush pretty big. And when you hold it, it will pucker. If my brush is too small, whoops. So I'm using the bracket to make this smaller. Uh, see, it only affects that little area right there, which might be what you want, but not what I want. 
I actually want to make this bloated because the kick is like a big bloated drum and it's making a big boomy sound. So I'm getting my brush about as big as the text, maybe a little bigger and I'll click and hold and then it will like do that thing. So cool. Uh, loving it. I'm going to hit OK. And boom, there's my mm, 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 mm. Okay, awesome. A um, couple more things I want to do is the white background is like just, it's, it's, it's fiery. It is uh, killing my eyes right now. So to get rid of this white background, we're going to clip it out. To clip it out, we need to choose what layer we're going to clip. And we're also going to unlock it by clicking on the lock button. And when I do that, I can come back here and choose the magic wand tool. And when I do that, Magic Wand is the fourth tool down. And if you don't see it, it's likely the Quick Selection tool. But if you hold on the Quick Selection tool, you can choose Magic Wand tool. The Magic Wand tool, just by clicking in any of this white area, will select just the white area. And if I hit Delete, boom. Um, and then I still have the Marching Ants, so I'm going to do Control D to deselect. Awesome. So I've got this checkerboard background. Uh, I don't want that. I'm going to do like a nice bright color like I saw before. And so for that, I'm going to use an adjustment layer. Uh, with the adjustment layer, I'll choose solid color. And yeah, red might be cool. Click OK. Notice my layer order. I'll drag that down below my snare thing. So there we have it. I have a uh, awesome little graphic album cover, you could say, maybe, um, of what the kick drum sounds like. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do with like the, just the drum itself. Uh, this is the last thing I'll show you. Go under Filter and play with all these filters. You know, not just the Liquify filter. Things like Distort has cool stuff. Um, noise, you can add. Oh, noise would be awesome. Look, add noise. I'm going to choose uh, Gaussian noise. I'll turn it way up. There you go. So maybe I've got like a distorted uh, drum sound. Um, I really like this. So I'm now going to turn this in by saving it as a JPEG file. Choose Save As. If you choose Save, it's going to save your layers. So you should probably save this as a Photoshop document. But to turn it in, you're going to save it as a JPEG. And that's right here. Save As Type. Choose JPEG and turn it in. And I hope you enjoy this. I'm actually going to use this as my example here. So I'll do, oh no, I always misspell it. I think it's this, I'm not a PIA. And I hope you enjoy. And I, I can tell you already, I love what you've made so far. Thank you. Save. Remember, quality 10. And then I'm going to stop my recording.